Maiden, owner of Mid Atlantic Water, and welcome to Water Talk. Today we're going to discuss the Clack 2.5 cubic foot Vortec Upflow Acid Neutralizer. Now we did a video about this unit years ago, and it is our number one selling acid neutralizer. If you go on our website, you'll see we have manual backwashing, automatic backwashing, and the uh, non-backwashing acid neutralizer, which has become uh, our most popular selling unit and this uh, monster here the clack 2.5 cubic foot acid neutralizer is our number one seller because a lot of people don't realize that a backwashing acid neutralizer even if it's the smaller 1.5 cubic foot with a if it has a, a electronic control valve or a mechanical control valve it's going to discharge 100 to 140 gallons or more of water during the backwash process and typically most units have a 10 minute uh, uh, backwash and a 10 minute rapid rinse and typically it's going to be at 5 uh, to 10 gallons per minute depending upon the size of your uh, neutralizing tank. We typically we have some of the units available in a gravel bedded just because some people are used to that and we have plumbers that still buy the gravel bedded unit but for the most part 98 percent uh, of our sales now are the Vortec tanks that doesn't require gravel and this will not pull up through the media if you ever have to take the valve off. It's permanently mounted into the Vortec plate in the bottom which takes up the entire circumference of the tank. So if this, this is installed as a downflow, the water is going to go down through the center tube and come up through the Vortec plate in a circular motion just like a tornado and that's going to eliminate any solidification or channeling of the media bed. But today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, assembling the control head and uh, the start up for uh, the 2.5 cubic foot uh, clack uh, upflow acid neutralizer with the Vortec tank. Because a lot of people ask me or, or they text me or email us, you know, how do I put the valve together? So the first thing, the first piece you're going to take is the main, main valve body. Um, and the one thing you want to do inside here is what they call a pilot and there's an o-ring and you need to lubricate that with either plumber's grease or if you don't have any plumber's grease available, they sell it at Lowe's at Home Depot. It comes in a small little disc container. Uh, you can use vegetable oil. Uh, most times have vegetable oil. You don't want to use anything petroleum based because it will deteriorate the O-ring over time and uh, cause a malfunction in the system. So basically, we're going to take this, gently put it on sometimes you have to get it a little tap, and then you just start to screw it down. And you, as with anything else in plumbing, you do not want to over tighten it. So I'll bring it to about here and just snug it up because it's going to seal with an O-ring. So basically, you have your two ports, your upflow inlet, which we usually recommend coming into from the well tank, and your downflow inlet. Now, the downflow inlet, now here's the thing with this unit. There is no wrong way to install it. You can install it as an upflow or a down. Flow. I've designed it to be foolproof. So either way you install it, it's going to work. It's just more efficient as an upflow because as it comes in, it will go down through the center tube, like I said before, and up through the Vortec plate, just like it's being backwashed every time you use water. So the second thing we're going to install is the bypass. Now people ask me, do I need to uh, put Teflon tape on these threads? No, you don't. In here you have an O-ring at the beginning and you have a snap ring inside of here which is going to hold the connecting nut in place. So you gently just wiggle that in and you start tightening up either side or both sides of the bypass. Now in the current position of the handles of the bypass when their arrows are facing each other that means that the unit is bypassed and you're going to get water straight off the well. Now, one thing you need to remember when tightening these up, hand tighten only. Do not put a pair of channel locks or a wrench on these and over tighten it because if you break it, you're buying another one. So, okay, so this, how, this is how it comes from the factory as far as showing the flow. Now, since we're going to typically come in through here, these pop off and you can 
change it around to show the correct flow. Because they're just handles that turn the bypass on and off. So here's what it's going to look like when you set it up. So when it's facing the wall, you're going to have your water coming in, your water going out. Now you may be going out and coming back around to the main house line, or you may be going into another piece of equipment such as a water softener. And that's another thing. This size unit with just plain calcite is going to increase the hardness level by four to six grains of hardness per gallon of water. So you want to take that into consideration when ordering an acid neutralizer. You may, in the future, need a water softener. If you're using a mixture of calcite and the flow mag, which is Corsex, usually in this size unit we'll use two pounds per 50 pound bag of calcite, and that could increase it even further. It could take it up to eight to 10 uh, grains of hardness per gallon of water. So at seven, most appliance manufacturers recommend that you do install a water softener to protect the uh, appliances from scale buildup. So now we have the head, we have our bypass. The next thing we're gonna install is the connections. Now, the connections, they're gonna come in a bag like this and the bag should be sealed. If the bag's not sealed and there's parts missing, give us a call. Typically that's not the case because we do installations here in Maryland and Southern PA and I've done hundreds of them myself and it's never an issue. So basically you wanna start, let me get this out of here, okay. Now, each connector you're gonna have four components, snap ring, an O-ring, your connecting nut, and your one inch threaded male elbow. So you're gonna put the connecting nut where the grooves are, that's gonna slide on first. <clears throat> and then you're gonna gently, and I know I get calls all the time that people break these, you're gonna gently put the snap ring on and you're gonna have to work it work it down around it because you, you have to get it to the bottom you're going to have to work it down and around the next layer which isn't too difficult and you're going to get it to snap in place so it's holding the connecting nut in place and the easiest part is you're going to put this o-ring on gently move it around you don't need to Lubricate it, you can if you want, I never do. I, don't know. I just gently slide it in, and again, you're gonna tighten this up. Now obviously this doesn't have calcite in it yet, it only weighs about 30 pounds. So I recommend getting this all done before you put your calcite in. If you're gonna fill it from the top, you can always unscrew this and take it back off. So you're gonna put that on, and you're good to go. Do the same thing with the second piece. You're going to put your snap ring on. I usually just grab it the, where it's split in half. Just grab it with your thumbnail, pull it apart, and wiggle it down to the next level. And do it gently. It can be frustrating. So make sure it's in place, and again, it should look like that when it's done. And then put the O-ring on. Simple process. My least mechanical customers have installed multi-tank systems with a, help, with a few phone calls to us, and it's not an issue. Now the one great thing about these, now you, one great thing about these connections, is that they rotate 360 degrees. So you can come from your well tank up this way, you can come this way. I've seen them, people have them set up like this, uh, going from one unit to the next or back to the main house line. Now one thing I need to stress, you can take this back off, because you will get a, a fill funnel, and usually a blue cap that goes in here. You want to cover this with tape 
before you put your funnel on and start dumping your calcite in. You do not want to get any calcite inside this uh, distributor tube or you will have to take it outside, dump it out, dump, tip it upside down and get all of that out. Now, the one more, most important thing, we include what they call a bayonet basket with all these clack heads. And what this does is it pushes in, clicks in place, and this is gonna go over the distributor tube. Now, the function of this basket is to keep calcite from escaping the media tank and going into your plumbing, which can happen with a backwashing type unit if you don't have a, have a, uh, a basket on it. <clears throat> Usually in a downflow, it, it only happens or, or only occurs when uh, somebody overfills the unit. And again, gently want to grab it, tighten it up, and that's your unit. Now the <clears throat> fill port is not going to come be exactly in the front, but it's still accessible. We just typically we we do sell a funnel that's designed for this fill port. It's about thirty-five dollars. It comes in some of our packages, but if you need a good funnel, you can go to Walmart, go in the automotive section where the oil is, and they have these long black funnels. You cut about four inches of it off, and it fits right inside this fill port, which is an inch and a quarter. Now another thing that customers have done, it says right on here, hand tighten. Okay, so we typically. When I go out to do an installation or service, I'll let this, when I turn the water back on, I turn open the, the feed valve about a quarter of the way, and I'll let it start to uh, fill up, and I'll leave this loose, and you can start to hear the air hissing out of it. <clears throat> and when it gets to a certain point, it's kind of like a pull filter. Water's gonna start squirting out of here, so I'm gonna hand tighten it. It's got an O-ring on the other side. I'm gonna hand tighten it, then I'm gonna take a pair of channel locks, and I'm gonna gently turn it about a quarter to a half turn and that's it it's gonna it's gonna seal and there shouldn't be any water running out of here if you over tighten it and split the lip of the fill port it pretty much voids the warranty see now I didn't over tighten it I can still loosen it by hand okay now as far as the connections go here in Maryland most homes or plumbed in in CPVC, not PVC, the white pipe, but CPVC, which is either is made by Crestline, which is either Flowbar Gold, or the standard Crestline, which doesn't have any markings on it other than that it's CPVC. So typically, the way we set it up is I'm gonna take a one inch female adapter, because these are one inch uh, male threads, and it's got an O-ring inside, and I'm gonna and, and this is good because it doesn't cross thread or it doesn't ruin the threads if you're trying to use a metal or, or brass uh, adapter. So I'm going to put this on, I'm going to hold this to steady it, and I'm just going to hand tighten it. And that's about as far as I have to go. Now if it's one inch coming off the well tank, I'm going to leave it that way and come from the well tank and one inch CPVC and plumb it in and then come out of this in one inch CPVC go back to the main house line. If the main house line is copper, I'm gonna take a one inch or three quarter, depending upon the size of the pipe. You don't have to solder, you just take a one inch or three quarter inch shark bite coupling, press it onto the copper, and then come around with your CPVC and push that in and you're done. So if your house is three quarter inch CPVC or you're gonna use PEX, we're gonna take a one by three quarter inch CPVC reducing bushing and we're going to glue that in and then you can if it's CPVC you can continue uh, in three quarter from your well tank put your shutoff valve in and then plumb into here and then come out and go back around in three quarter inch CPVC uh, to the the main house line if it's CPVC you glue in a coupling three quarter inch CPVC coupling if you're going from CPVC to copper again Use the sharp bite uh, coupling. You just push one end in, push the other end in, and you're done. Now, if you're using PEX, if you have the manifold system, what I usually do is I'll glue in like a four inch stub, and I'm going to take the sharp bite, push that on, okay, and you can see how that setup goes. And then I'm going to come off the manifold or the well tank with the PEX tubing 
one inch or three quarter, whatever it's going to be, push it right in here and you're done. You can continue on, you come out of here with the same uh, connection set up with uh, the packs and go back around to the main house line and you're done. It's that simple. Um, but other than that, and see I, don't, I didn't over tighten that, I can easily take it back off if for some reason the glue didn't seal right and I have to redo it. I can just take this off, screw another one on, and I don't have to worry about destroying the threads because a lot of people will try to use uh, a brass uh, fitting and they'll screw it on and either cross thread it or mangle the threads and then they're going to have to order another uh, connection. So that is the simplest way to explain how to set the unit up. It's very simple and like I said leave it uh, empty of calcite until you've got everything set up. You're going to put it in place. If you need to level it, the boot at the bottom, the black boot at the bottom can move. So you just lift it up, say I need it to go this way. I'm going to lift it up, tap that edge of the, the unit and it'll help get it to vertical where it's, it's uh, standing up straight of course. Or if I need to go to the back, tilt it towards me to the front, same way, and you can get it uh, nice and straight before you plumb it in. Because not every basement floor, most basement floors have fall coming away from the wall. It could be, it could be very minor. It could be up to a quarter of an inch of fall, depending upon if you have a, a um, drain system in the basement, a sump pump, and you want to make sure you know that it's as straight as you can possibly get it uh, before you fill it with calcite and do the plumbing. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You take another look. That's what it looks like set up. It's fairly simple. It's basic and it is the most effective and efficient way to naturally raise the pH without using chemicals. And that's another thing I don't recommend chemical injection. They're labor intensive. You have to get the mixture perfect. Uh, if it's too strong, it can be toxic. Um, it can actually cause if somebody's down there or a child's down there playing around and they get some of that water that's in the bin on them, it can cause burns. Uh, and I've, I've gathered this information from customers and plumbers and installers over the past 25 years that I've actually been selling and installing water treatment systems. So if you have any questions, about any of our neutralizers, especially the clack. Like I said, this is our best selling one. It averages this average price uh, when it's on sale is about $5.95, and that includes shipping the calcite. You can also order it without calcite. We have a section of neutralizers uh, without calcite if you already have a local calcite supplier. Just buy the unit and save yourself the extra money uh, on the calcite. But if you have any questions or need any assistance with uh, installation or choosing the correct system for your home, give us a call at 800-460-5810 or you can also email us at support at midatlanticwater.net.